Okay, so I watch too much cable news. It's just it, it's a fact of of living in 2018, and I just I have it on too much, mm-hmm. and that's a problem because the world is depressing right now. It's also a problem because I see a lot of ads that you normally don't get on regular TV. Um, a lot of pharma ads, a mm-hmm. lot of, you know, try this thing and here's sure. all the side effects, including death, you know, mm. stupid ass ads. And then there's this, there's this company called BDO. They're a, um, an accounting firm and they put on the worst ads Prove you've it. ever heard. Do you want to hear one? Prove it. Are you sure? Prove it. It's so bad. Okay, here it goes. You asked for it. just inherit 4,000 acres. We set up a trust, and that's how we transferred the stock. So Let's awful. run this by BDO. It was their idea. It was their idea. So oh, stupid. No. Nobody talks no like that. Deal. And I'm, I'm not even, no, I'm not letting the tagline, I'm going to talk right over it, because we are not sponsored by BDO. Uh, I and let will them. never be and now. We'll, well, thank God, because they would, they would have us read copy and say, please be as wooden as you possibly can <laughs> as you read this copy, because that's on brand for us. You can actually like put in a little effort and sound like a human being. Okay. Why are these commercials so bad? I don't get it. And you said before, you're just smiling and laughing. <laughs> I am because I think it's hysterical that you you're so upset said, about Well, this. you said before, it's like, well, they only have a fifth. That's a six. That's a 15 second Ten, spot, Ten Eric. Second. No, it was 15. Um, but, you know, they do have a 30 second version of some of their ads and they're just as terrible. There's this woman going, think about all the tax jurisdictions. No one says that. That is so stupid. Like what? Uh, uh, mad. <laughs> that was loud. <laughs> that was so loud in my ear. Attention. Attention. Pop surgeons Eric and Stacy, please report to operating room one. Pop surgeons Eric and Stacy, please report to operating room one. Surgery is about to begin. Happy holidays. And Joyo Noel to you. <laughs> uh, you know what? It's uh, Poperation. I'm Stacy. I'm Eric. We're talking. Actually, this is this is actually one of we talk about our favorite episodes. One is when we pick music playlists. Yep. And the other one. Because we never talk about pop music, but twice a year. Ex- we, I know. We go all in. And you're welcome. Because it's Frank's favorite show, too. <laughs> when you have to edit all of that. Yeah, shit he's not. Yeah. He's giving you uh, a look. He's giving you the eye. So the other one that we really like, uh, that we really enjoy, is the trailers when we look at movie trailers now again keep in mind as eric always what's your disclaimer uh we are not important nobody sends us screeners we don't get screeners we don't get the full film to preview and tell you if it's any good or not we're just like you we went onto youtube we watched a bunch of fucking three minute trailers and we're here to talk about those now that is interesting. I mean, it's a whole like art versus commerce conversation, right? Because it's like trailers in and of themselves are little mini movies. Um, and before we started watching this batch, I actually showed you um, a, 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 one of my favorite kind of joke trailers is called Scary Mary. And it's somebody who took the original Mary Poppins starring Julie Andrews and turned it into a trailer for a horror film. So it's the same. It They didn't add anything except music yep and and i don't know if they even added sound effects i think it's just they added no. some scary music some which was julie andrews singing stay awake from mary poppins they just put some reverb on it to right make it sound and then scary. they put scary font yep on it and then edited the hell out of it and this is what tells you why when um movies are putting together producers are putting together all their stuff the whole trailer making previews is industry is just so important because you watch the scary mary and then watch the original trailer for it the one that was actually yeah. people saw and made them go see the movie and it just it turns it inside out it, it's it was crazy i had not seen it before i know that sounds yeah. weird but I suggest go to YouTube, search up Scary Mary, and it's Mary Poppins is a horror movie. And honestly, and it's really funny. If you if you like Mary Poppins, it's kind of funny yes, to see Yes, but this. I will tell you, 
that watching it and knowing that they didn't add any scenes, you're like, oh, my God, all that scary stuff does happen. It does. It's horrific. Well, and Mary Poppins is a, you know, she's, she's, she's a witch. She's kind of creepy. Um, Actually, have you heard do total rabbit hole? I apologize. Have you seen this whole thing where somebody tried to tie Mary Poppins to the whole J.K. Rowling universe and they like you know that she went to hogwarts and oh they tried stop to, yeah, it it was very funny no it was very funny. i did not um you know british this, magical people everything she can do they do in the book so okay. i thought it was funny well and it's funny though that you say that because we're basically going to go through and what is when stuff is coming out yep um and uh there's a lot of stuff that came out at in in the beginning of November, but we're not going to touch on that because it's already out. Yep. <laughs> Duh. So uh, starting November 16th, these are some movies that came out and you said J.K. Rowling. And, and and this is a movie she wrote called Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, um, which is the, the bad wizard that was written about in book seven of the Harry Potter series. Um, basically the Hitler of the wizarding world. While, while the, the muggles were all fighting world war two, the wizards were involved in a big war themselves. And the dark wizard was Grindelwald. The big hero wizard of course was Dumbledore who grew up to be the headmaster of Hogwarts that Harry and Hermione and Ron all, all knew. But this is uh, Dumbledore is a young man played by Jude, Jude law, law. Uh, and Gellert Grindelwald played by uh, Johnny Depp, um, who I believe is the first American actor to be given any kind of big role, big role. Yes. Um, as a, as a Brit now, not really true. Okay. Don't at me because there were some Americans obviously in fantastic priests. The one that came before this right, right, who right. were actually playing Americans. Right. Um, but... but it was one of JK Rowling's big things during the first eight movies of the seven Harry Potter books that, she only wanted British actors. And that changed when she started, when they started the fantastic beasts, beasts thing, you know, they, they had Americans running amok. Well, most of it takes place in New York. Right. Right. right so right, they right. kind of showed that there's a whole American wizarding right. world as well. Yeah. So, but, but Depp is not playing an American. He is playing a Brit, which yeah. is an interesting choice considering how many, of course, maybe they've already used all of the Brits. They haven't. You know, we were thinking the other day, like how many people have not like Ian McKellen was never in the. No, because he did the other one. Yeah. But I mean, he could be playing this. This guy you would not confuse with Gandalf. No, you no, know, no, no. So, I mean, that would be, no. you know, there's and there's quite a few, you know, uh, no, great there is British That's actors true. who they have not yet tapped uh, to be in this thing. But uh, but yeah, Johnny Depp's yep. doing it. Um, and uh, it looks to be really fun. I mean, this one has got some more callbacks to the Harry Potter world that you know than Fantastic Beast did. Now, you didn't see Fantastic Beast. I haven't seen it yet, and I feel like I should. I mean, I look, here's the thing about the trailers. For both Fantastic Beast and this one, they make me want to go see it at the same time. It's not at the top of my list. And I will be honest with you, I don't know that it's at the top of my... First of all, I feel like to see this one, I need to see the first one. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen it, so there's that. At the same time, Frank and the girls are, are like, they're on board. They're in. They're in. I would say that if you really know your Harry Potter well, but did not see Fantastic Beasts, the the prequel to this one, uh, you'd probably walk in going, OK, this is basically an, a Harry Potter prequel. Right. Um, and you'd get to know because, you know, we never really saw Dumbledore uh, in the first one. Um, we didn't, okay, you know, right. and so, so Jude Law as Dumbledore is being introduced, uh, this time around. It's magic, magic on top of magic, a little bit of humor, uh, the people that you knew from Fantastic Beasts and all the, you know, it yep. looks like, it, it looks like, I think it's going to be I will a say the American muggle from Fantastic Beasts was A, so great. And B, the movie ended and you wondered if he would be back. Um, and good to see that he's back. Yeah, it yeah. is good to see he's back. Um, so that's, uh, that's good. That's a family, that's a family film. That's, you know, I think that people will go see that. It'll be all good. One that is probably more of an independent kind of smaller Oscar Oscar theater. Yeah. Oh, I would like to say this from all. Of, there is a lot of that going on in this slew of trailers that we're going to talk about. And then a lot of stupid movies, though, as well. Like, I think holiday movie preview, I think, oh, it's all going to be highbrow. And there's some stuff in here that is. Oh, there's <laughs> a, but there's a not. lot. I mean, there's a lot. It's like, oh, come on, just be fun. That's kind of where I am yeah. is that I don't need to. But here is one. It's uh, at Eternity's Gate. And it is about uh, Vincent van Gogh. And uh, <laughs> uh, you're welcome. And uh, you. it's Willem Dafoe. And what was what's funny 
when you watch this, in my opinion, is that why didn't we see that he looked so much like Vincent Van Gogh before? Well, yeah, the straw hat and the costume, and then boom, he looks exactly he like looks that self-portrait. He looks exactly like yeah. him. And it's weird that we know what Vincent Van Gogh looked like exactly because we have the self-portrait. You know, somebody could play Michelangelo in a movie, and I'd be yeah, like, yeah. okay, oh, okay. And whatever. Sure. You know, it looks like whoever the actor is playing yep. him. This one, you have to have the look, and, and he's he, got it. And it's amazing. I mean, it looks like it's a, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's not, I oh tell you i probably won't see it in the theater it's one of those thinky esoteric kind of it looks like it would work just as well on the small screen because it's a movie about ideas as i said it it is it's a very much a biopic kind of thing it's a small movie and again it'll be in it won't be in the big theaters i can't imagine and it's not for everybody's taste but you know check out the preview for yourself but i i but it's totally it, you know, next next Oscar nominated yeah. Willem Dafoe because they, he looks amazing. So then you were talking about there's some silly movies. This next one that we watched. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Eric barely got through it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's he, OK. It's called Instant Family and it stars Rose Byrne and um, uh, Mark Wahlberg. Here's my issue. I'm kind of Rose needs to pick some different parts because this is like the third or fourth movie I've seen her where she played the American wife. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, come on. I I still look at her and I remember her from damages that lawyer well, show she did with Glenn yeah. Close that was kind of freaky scary and like she's good she's got she she's is got good chops. but it's like this is just the wife of a of a Dork. you know a sitcom made into a two hour movie but she's just as sitcom and dopey in this one too I mean no I, no, I'm not saying that she is rises above it I'm just saying she needs to do some other yeah. parts well anyway this movie is about two white people who adopt three Latino not adopt they are in foster, foster care. care they foster looking to adopt looking to adopt perhaps you know or, or just do a good deed or something Thing, you know, and and they, it's just uh, the the one thing about this this preview that gave me a little bit of hope and then dashed it immediately was this you know where one of the uh, the the oldest girl uh, of this trio of kids just basically says you're a couple of white people who just want brownie points for like doing a good deed and helping out the brown kids. I'm like, yes, this is the problem with the whole movie, and then it just goes right back into well, the trailer does now does the you know my guess is because it is Mark Wahlberg. Sorry, Mark, that it probably does go back into the tropey kind of thing. But I, this, as I said, what I realized is you know the editing in these trailers can tell you anything and yeah. make it to be anything that they want it to to look like and it may not be exactly what it looks like i know that was inarticulate but anyway <laughs> uh, my feeling is it probably is it's one of those yeah. forgettable i don't know quote, what the movie is because we haven't seen it but the movie they're selling yeah vis-a-vis this trailer is just white you know, people get redemption white for people taking for doing the little things that the POC they do. Children, yeah, ugh, and they're so lucky to have barf, them as parents. And yuck. it's uh, you know, I, I'll be honest, I yawned a little bit. <laughs> um, now this next one, I want to see. I know you do. I'm super excited about this one. This is Widows. Yes, starring Viola Davis as Liam Neeson, and also <laughs> as <laughs> Liam, ne- the late Liam Neeson's <laughs> surviving spouse, hence the title. Okay, Liam Neeson didn't die, but his character does. His character does. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's it's basically it was this bunch of guys who were burglars, is what I'm gathering from the trailer, yep. and uh, they end up dying on They're the all last taken out. heist, yep. and their widows are then threatened by people wanting money, I yeah. guess, from the last heist or something. I don't know that something. they were killed in their last heist. I have a feeling they were all taken out individually by this group of people oh, who are after it's hard them. To ex- it's hard to understand because there's a lot of explosions. Yeah, just a lot of, a lot of explosions, a lot of men dying. What we do know is that their the four, surviving wives right. decide to do their last heist anyway. And but it, and there's the stakes are raised because their lives are threatened yep. by somebody. The same Not just who, the cops. Uh, but The same yeah. criminals, I think, that took out yeah. their husbands are now after so them. So you've got uh, Viola Davis is the main Badass. widow. Yep. Very, very cool. It looks like a very, very cool. And and Michelle Rodriguez, whom you might know from Fast and Furious yep. stuff, is, very is one of the other with ones. A, with a Kevlar yeah, I on. sat there and I went, she knows how to, to do this yep. already, people. And then, but so the guys that die, uh, let's see, Liam Neeson is, is was Viola's husband. Viola's husband who died or was killed. Yep. Then you have uh, Colin Farrell plays 
I guess tra- uh, some kind of advisor. Duvall's, what's his face? Duvall. Duvall's son. Son. Robert Duvall's son. Yeah. And there, I don't, I can't tell whether he's the mayor or he's somewhere, somebody he's political giving or her whatever. Advice. Yeah. Some, when he's there for some exposition, right. but hey, it's Colin Farrell you know, as another American. And so, yeah. uh, you know, if someone's going to just sit around and give random exposition, he might as well be nice to look at, like it Colin is, Farrell is. Uh, Sexy female eyebrows. Female empowerment, revenge, vile. It's everything you want in a Christmas movie. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, Tarantino could have directed this one. It but, looks like it. Yeah, um, it's an action pick, obviously, and and again, Eric's all over it. And if that's what you're you're wanting, then it looks like. I mean, the acting is going to be good, no matter fun. what. Yes, and it looks fun. Yeah, and it could very well be. So moving on now to November twenty first, Thanksgiving week. Yeah, so this is the week, but this is this is before Thanksgiving. Yeah, but, right yeah. before. Um, Starting out with Creed 2. Mm-hmm. So it's basically Rocky, what, 9? 4. I mean, well, yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> yes, but it's it's basically, so what you have is that you have Creed, Apollo Creed's son, who was we saw in Creed, yep. um, and Sylvester Stallone, and Apollo Creed's son is played by... Michael B. Jordan. Right. Hot. Yes. So, so this is the sequel... I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, the sequel to Creed. Yep. But as you said, it could be Rocky which was 17. the spinoff right. from the Rocky thing, which now, still stars Sylvester Stallone right. as Rocky. So Balboa. here's the deal about this one. So if you watch the Rocky movies and you saw Rocky Four is where it was U.S. versus Russia. Uh huh. And so Dolph Lundgren played Dre- Ivan Drago. Drago. This now we have Ivan Drago's son. Yep. As a boxer, and for some he's reason, he's a tank. This guy is like he's, well, know, but which huge. so yeah. was yeah. you know uh, Drago. Anyway, the deal is now it's going to be Apollo Creed's son uh, and another face off between yep. Drago and Creed, their son, second yep. generation. Um, and Drago not to killed. Give a spoiler, yeah, but Drago yeah. killed Apollo Creed the first time, right. which is you know <laughs> if you hadn't watched Rocky Four, oh well, yeah. this trailer is going to spoil. And, it but for that's you. why. Rocky four was because Apollo Creed got killed and that was part of the raising the stakes and, and getting Rocky all set to beat yep. this guy who is at least Dolph Lundgren is twice as big as Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was crazy. And Dolph anyway, Lundgren is back in this one as well. He is the father yes. in this, which I thought was nice. That's nice to give him a job, but <laughs> you know, it, to me, it looks like it's, it's, you know, it, it's it's Rocky Four. I mean, it's it's Creed Two. It's the same kind yep. of thing. It's yep. a boxer movie. If you like that sort of thing, if you like rock, if you liked Rockies, but Creed and you liked felt Creed. like it was Rocky over again, but with a black man at the center of it. This is like Rocky Four all over again with a black with, man at the with, center of with it with Michael B. Jordan exactly. as Rocky, basically. And again, I have nothing against that. If it's well done, go for it. I thought many of the Rocky movies were fun, and I thought Creed was good. So I'm all for it. Will I see it in the theater? Probably not. Yeah, I don't know. Um, nice to see Felicia Rashad. Oh yeah, that's right. Felicia Rashad's in there yeah. as Creed's mom. Yeah, and Tessa Thompson as his wife. Um, both of whom I like a lot. So uh, yeah, it's got a yeah. good cast. You know, hey. Now here's one that I will see in the theater, possibly the weekend. That weekend, it might. In fact, it might be my Thanksgiving Day movie, and that is Ralph Breaks the Internet. Okay. This one is the se- the sequel. To uh, Wreck It Ralph, uh-huh. which um, has, it's a, it's animated and it stars the voices of John C. Riley and Sarah Silverman, and they're both back in this. By the way, this is the first of three movies that are coming out this season with John C. Riley yeah, he as a really star. Like, yeah, he's everywhere right he's now. Everywhere. So this is the sequel to to Wreck It Ralph. Ralph breaks the the internet. Basically, Sarah Silverman's little character. She is one of those little characters that drives really fast. And what if you had to name it, it would be one, you know, on the Mario Kart mm-hmm. kind of thing. And the arcade where she her game is uh, breaks. And so she and Ralph decide to go to figure out a way to fix the machine. They end up going on the internet and it looks adorable. They meet all of the Disney princesses, which is 
adorable. And then all that stuff on the internet, they've either animated it or personified like it. That's the word. Pop-up ads and exactly. cat videos. And it's just, you know. It looks like fun. I'm okay. sorry. It looks like overstimulation to me. I mean, quite honestly, I got a little overstimulated. Just well, that's because it, it was you know, a trailer and they yeah. put all of the stuff I know, in there. I know. But uh, you'll tell me how it is. Okay. That's fine. Um, so then... I have mixed feelings about the new Robin Hood. <laughs> it's starring Taryn Egerton, which you probably know from the Kingsman. Okay. That one. Yep. Uh, and also Jamie Foxx. Basically, it looks like they have taken a lot of the aspects of the Kevin Costner version. And so Jamie Foxx is playing uh, Robin Hood's Moore friend yep. that Morgan Freeman played yep. in the Kevin Costner. I mean, first of all, I'm going to say this. It, really can't be where i mean at least taron is british you know what i mean so he can't be he can't be worse than kevin costner i'll tell you what i thought when i was watching this is that at first i thought oh it's like a modern day retelling of robin hood i thought it was like now i thought that the setting was like you know and and then when it it got into it i was like oh like they really are like when you're talking about the treasury, they're talking about gold coins. Did and when you, you see the castles, they see the castles. I thought the archery was like the only kind of retro throwback to Robin Hood and everything else. I thought it was going to be like Green Arrow, the television series. But they have funky designer, weird well, costumes. hip hop music and, playing and yeah. the cinematography is all very yeah. quick cut, super yes. close up, super far away. So it looks very modern in it. But I honestly thought that this was not a period thing. Mm. And then when it was like it was literally like a minute into the preview, it was like, like, oh, they're not playing with the period. This is just like straight up Robin Hood. And I was like, oh, um, I thought the original I thought what I thought first was more interesting, quite frankly. I, You know, it was fine. Um, I, I, I my my thing is, I would I want to see if it's, you know, if they fixed some of the issues that the Costner one had yeah. on the on the other hand, you don't have Alan Rickman. And clearly the guy who is I think he's I think the they had the villain still is the sheriff of Nottingham is ridiculous. He's just bad. He's, he's, he's not not bad like a bad actor. He's no, just he's a bad just, guy. He's just a bad guy. He's but just he's just a bad he's, guy with nothing interesting about he him. He doesn't look interesting at all. I I, I he he just looks and very. And did we even see mill. Maid Marian in this? Yeah, I'm, but I you didn't know her. it because yeah. they didn't introduce her. Yeah. But it was that girl he kissed. Okay, for a well, second. Sure. I mean, but but yeah, no, it's very very. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I I will tell you this right now. I probably won't see it. The I'm, no, it's a no for me. Uh, one that I, I thought just channeled Simon Cowell. That was not <laughs> pleasant for anybody. One that I thought you would like, but you didn't. No, is Green Book. And Why did you think I would like it? I, for some reason, it just looked like one of those that you would go, "Oh, that's good." You know, it's one of those small, again, another small movie, quiet thing with racism. Uh, <laughs> Um, it's Vigo quiet thing with Mortensen. racism. Erica, love it. I know that doesn't sound right when I say it out loud. <laughs> Vigo Mortensen and Maharshala Ali uh, are the stars, and the deal is that Ali is a very he's he's black, and in fact, he was in what was he in Moonlight? Moonlight. That's right. Okay. Won the Oscar. Moonlight. Yeah. Right. 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 He's Phew. great. And he's great. So, and Vigo looks good in this as well. So, Ali is a pianist going for a tour in the South in yep. the 60s. I mean, and this has inspired what can by go a wrong? true story, which is different from based on a true story. It means there's even less. I was going to say, of both a, of them are, you know, both are bullshit terms. Okay. Well, they don't I mean, mean don't anything. Know. You um, just have to have the names right. Inspired means don't even come at me with the lawyers. Cause, yeah. Because right. One scene of this could have been based in Correct. reality. Um, they just have to exist. You just have to have, you know, it just, you know, it basically means they're saying, but this could have really happened. And I'm watching this whole thing going cliche after cliche. Okay. This is a movie about a friendship that is just miraculous. And you know why it's such a miracle? Cause one of them is black. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the movie. And then it's supposed to have lots of precious uh, driving Miss Daisy, but in reverse, cause it's a white guy driving a yeah. black guy around, you know, you know, moments where it's like, you know, he offers him some fried chicken and the guy says, I've never had fried chicken in my life. And it's like, what? That's crazy because you're black. Yeah. It. Yeah. And then I'm, there's mm -hmm. the, you know, the cops pull him over thing. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm i now to and I, I don't know. It was it's just one of those where I, I don't know if 
the happy ending, if there is one, is going to make all of the in. The it might stuff be a very good that. movie, but the preview just looked like yeah. derivative, feel good bullshit. And yeah. you know, I just I, get I it. was not. No, it's, it by looks cliche. So that's uh, that's November, and we'll talk about December movies next. December 7th is a day that will live in infamy. How so? (laughs) And you say, oh, that's right, because of Pearl Harbor. Or if you're close to me, you know it's because that's when my daughter was born. Oh, there you go. But no. she's posing behind you. Oh. We're in our new studio, by the way, otherwise known as Stacy's Dining Room. It's true. Um, So, uh, hey, Sophia, how are you? (laughs) So uh, the first movie that we're we're doing for the December 7th release is called Ben is Back. Terrible title. I think it'll be infamous. I just don't think it will be. It's really a terrible title. But you were excited because it's got your girl, Julia. Julia Roberts, who I do love. I like Um, her too, but. But this is about basically what it's like to be the parent of a drug addict. Um, and how just exhausting and emotionally, you know, devastating that can be. Again, Oscar, this is, again, there are several that are just for me. It's just about, I want an Oscar. And so <laughs> this is the movie I'm going to do. The one thing that made me go, oh, this might be better than the the preview lets on is, is written and directed by Peter Hedges, who also wrote and directed Pieces of April, which we talked about which, about this time last year when we yeah. did our Thanksgiving episode. Yeah. No, 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 it, which um, I love that movie. And it was great. And so it kind of makes me wonder if, you know, he's got a, a good sense of the way humor can be real, you know, I mean, because there was a lot of comedy in Pieces of April, but never like forced. And what I will say about Pieces of April is that that because it's so layered, the movie itself, it's hard to pull out scenes that accurately tell you what is this movie about yeah. in a preview. Yeah. And so if that's the case with this, that may be, I will tell you right now, it doesn't look like anything I want to see. It looks yeah. just awful depressing to Although me. Although the boy who the the son, uh, Lucas Hedges, I don't know if there's any uh, dun, relationship dun, dun. there. Um, but, you know, he's already done great things. He was I've an Oscar nominee. He was in Manchester by the Sea, yeah. uh, starring Me Too hero Casey Affleck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but also was in that movie Boy Erased, mm, uh, right. playing the gay kid who goes away to conversion camp. So, And he got great reviews yes. for that. So he's, you know, whether or not he's Peter Hedges' Here's son or learned. nephew or whoever, he's a good actor. So got a couple of good actors. Yes, and you have two actors who are in most of the scenes together, Julia and that Hedges boy. Mm-hmm. Let me just say this. This is what I learned from the trailer. They both know how the hell to cry. Yes. So much crying. So much crying. That's all I want to say. <laughs> ben is back. Hashtag so much crying. But uh, but also some suspense going on in there. There's one point where he like you has are trying to, you know, to save it right now. No, I'm not. I really I'm not. I mean, I I I will see this long before you will. I think it. it you oh, know, yeah. it, it did appeal to me. Um, there was this one scene in the trailer where he has to go into. He's trying to like leave his past behind, and part of that is paying off somebody he owes money to. And he, you know, he's going to walk into this, you know, scary looking house and he's like, lock the door while I'm gone. And she's just in the car freaking out. She has no idea what's going on in there, which I think is, you know, pretty, I I would imagine a maternal nightmare. Um, So, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, it looked like for what it is, which is a very, you know, stark drama about fun things like addiction. I think it looks like it's well made. Um, hmm. But yeah, I might yeah. consider it to, not your type of thing yeah, at no, all. Let me I t- know. Let me know. There's no one there that I rooted for. Okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> I just I just want to give everybody a Kleenex, man. Yeah. Wipe Hi, your damn nose, met. Julia. I get it. Uh, so Mary, Queen of Scots, because you can't <laughs> have enough about the British queens right now. Apparently, we're going to do them all. Yeah. And so it's, it's right up your alley. You should, you, you know, I would imagine that you kind of enjoy this, you know. Mm, the trailer is all I need to see of this. Okay. Okay. It is uh, Margot Roby and why do you say it? Shersha. Shersha. Ronan. I can't do it's it. It's S A O I R S E. It's not, I a, it's, see it. it's, it's Gaelic. I know. I mean, so it's one of those Gaelic people don't know how to spell. They clearly. usually I mean, don't have vowels I'm saying it's in okay. them. I'm saying it's okay that you don't, or too many, you know. 
Sure, so sure anyways, uh, sure, sure running best known for Lady Bird. Right. That's her, you know, latest thing. Uh, so she plays Mary, Queen of Scots. Yep. And Margot Robbie plays Elizabeth, Queen of England. The first. In Elizabeth the first. Uh, I, you know, I hashtag it. Ginger's on the warpath, man. It's, you know, I know how the story ends, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a story between these two cousins who call themselves it's, sisters sometimes, yeah. but um, you know that it's a different idea. It's of been done. What it's, is their relationship? Yeah, and that's what this this is, and and. You know, is it, it, it you talk about quote based on a true story or inspired by whatever? That's I don't know what how this historically is. Historically accurate, this going to be. We, yeah. Wasn't Mary Queen of Scots actually French? Wasn't is or is Marie de Guise somebody? I, I'm no, not as different. up on my British that's, history. No, 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 no. Mary, okay. Mary is Scottish. She was Scottish. Okay, yeah. And sure, she's got a brilliant Scottish accent. Oh, it's beautiful. You know, it's the, and Mar Margot, who is actually Australian, I believe, mm -hmm. is a nice little British accent yep. going on there. And that's I'm not loving white her. Face. Yeah, but I'm not loving her in the red hair. For some reason, Margot doesn't. I don't. I'm not feeling it. The red, the red hair on her. But who cares? Who well, cares? She's playing Elizabeth first. Yet Nobody asked me. Um, Kate Blanchett was busy. <laughs> as was you know what anyway <laughs> i'm going to i'm just going to say if you like that sort of you like historical mm -hmm. you know stuff and you can't get like enough strong of strong young women again i think that's part of the theme going on but at the same time it's like they're you know either makeup i don't know this yeah. this is not a story that i necessarily and again part of it is because it is it's the holiday time. Yep. And I know how that thing ends. It doesn't end well for Mary Queen of Scots. No, it does not. It does not. And so anyway, that's what I will say though, it sometimes it's interesting how previews can kind of read your mind or else they're trying to stave off some criticism because as soon as I saw the setup I was like my what was happening in my head was I was joking even to myself saying, "Ooh, historical chick fight." Right? That's what this It's exactly is. what it is. And yet like halfway through the preview, yeah. Mary says to Elizabeth, we're fighting is exactly what they want. Yes. Why are we doing this? And I was like, yes. And so at least it kind of goes. But there. Doctor Who number 10, David Tennant is in it. And it sounds like because you could hear his voice every once in a while mm -hmm. that he's an instigator. So all of the men, it basically looks like. Mary and Elizabeth probably could have gotten along historically. Yep. And according to this particular movie, all of the men and politicians manipulated them. Yeah. So they fought well, because Elizabeth and, didn't have any children and Mary Queen of Scots had an heir. And right. that meant that, that the, the idea was her is it, young baby was going to take over England if they didn't do something in about theory, it. If they put the, the, and there's a whole Catholic versus Protestant thing going on there too, isn't there? Uh, the trailer didn't get to it, but isn't that why it was such a big deal that they didn't want Yes and no, but it was, okay, I think, that more was an of a Scottish of England fry thing. That you were just doing. Sorry, right there. I think it was more of an English, England, you England versus uh, Scottish thing. Yeah. Uh, Which that, than, that rivalry is still alive and well. Right, but I don't. I, yeah. Um, so anyway, that's Mary Queen of Scots. We're gonna both kind of pass on that one. I, I you know, if, hey, if if it comes around, if I see it, fine. If I'm on travel somewhere, cool. But it's not like I, I'll probably I'll probably rent it. I'll probably stream it at some point, especially if it gets good reviews. So you know, I'm not sure that this December seventh is gonna live in infamy just based on those movies. <laughs> uh, December fourteenth. There, now, this one I included because at first I thought this was a TV thing. And I'm like, oh, I shouldn't include this one. And then I realized this is actually a theatrical release. It is. It is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Mm -hmm. And it's a cartoon. And it's basically the idea is that every universe has its own Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, something happens and they all end up in this universe. Uh, and so our Spider-Man has to work with the other spider people. Yep. And, you know, whatever. What was fun is that so you you start in the trailer and, he, and it's first person and you think it's Peter Parker and it may be it may be his name. I don't know. They mm -hmm. didn't talk about it. But he's talking about, you know, this is my world and I've done this and I've done that. And he said, I thought I was the only Spider-Man in the world. I was wrong. And then you seeing him swinging and then he stops and then he pulls off his mask and it's this uh, young African-American kid. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's exciting. Now, if you were a comics reader, you would have seen this coming from Miles. But Moore I'm not. Because uh, Miles Morales uh, 
has been kind of an oh, alternate that's his name. Spider-Man. That's his name. Yeah, Sorry. so he's he's black Latino. He's he's multiracial, yep. um, and he's been you know an alternate Spider-Man for years in the the comics universe. As has Gwen Stacy, um, who was the name also of inter- Emma Stone's character. Yes, I remember. And everyone's that. like, "Ooh, is she going to take over at some point?" Because you know that was another right. kind of a thing in one of these universes. Comic books do this all the time is they create multiverses so they can just basically take it back when they didn't want to kill off somebody. Okay. Oh, well, now we're in another universe. So in this universe, this person lived. I mean, it's just to me, it's lazy. So to I so I was like the whole idea of multiple universes has always been a little for me anyway. And then to see this where they pull together all of these. I think you're right. I think it's cool to finally see this version of Spider-Man um, come around. I've. I've heard a lot of chatter that when they brought Spider-Man back for the third time in very quick succession, why don't they just do the Miles Morales version? At least there, it's something interesting. It's a whole new set of supporting characters because his dad's a cop. And that's also kind of interesting shades of kind of Batgirl and Commissioner Gordon. You know, why not just make it a live action thing? I'm, you know, this just look, I was, I was confused by the trailer and maybe I'll, you know, I won't see this in the theaters, okay. but, uh, you know, eh. I don't know that, you know, as I said, I don't know whether I'll see it in the theater. I I will probably watch it some way. It looked cute. It looked fun. I, I enjoyed the, mm-hmm. you know, the writing of it and, yep. and the idea of it. I don't have a problem with the multiverse. I thought it was funny that there were all these people from different and they're very different spider people. And they include spider pig and they spider pig, which, which is was, also from Marvel comics. Like again, saw it, again coming. it was, it, I found it amusing. And again, I don't, I didn't read the comics. So this was all new. I only am can only base it on the trailer itself. Yeah. So as I said, it's one of those that I'm like, okay, huh? Maybe. Um, Here's one that every time I see the trailer or see a trailer, I'm less and less enthusiastic about it. Yeah. On the 19th mm. of December, Mary Poppins returns. Yeah. Um, This time around is the first time we heard Emily Blunt sing. And Emily Blunt is taking over for Julie Andrews as Mary Poppins in this version. And all I can say is Emily Blunt is fantastic. But trying to fill those shoes is just impossible. Well, nobody is Julie Andrews except for Julie Andrews. Well, no one was Julie Andrews when Julie Andrews was Julie Andrews, and certainly nobody is now. Right. Well, you know, so it's Emily Blunt as Mary Poppins, and it's Lin Man, well, Miranda as um, why did I forget his name? Bert. Bert. Yeah. Is he really Bert or is he yes. Bert's son or something? Because everyone else seems to like she has an age, but everyone else is older. Well, I, I don't know. I thought he because was Bert. Emily Mortimer and Ben Wishaw are Jane and Michael, yes. the young, you right. know, but they're grown adults now. Yeah. You know what? I'm not sure who he is. I was assuming he was Bert because he's the chimney unless, sweep guy. He's ageless, too. I don't I don't. I mean, he did. He was... also go to Hogwarts. What? Oh, stop it. I you know, the more as I said, I, I watched it. And first of all. Emily's take on Mary Poppins looks to be a little bit different, a little, sterner, a little bit more a little modern yep. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know about that. Her singing voice, that's not going to bother me, but I will tell you the songs may, if you can't mm-hmm. be that good, yeah. I don't, you know, I just, it's like, maybe don't do as many. I, I don't know. And what Maybe they haven't. We heard maybe one, we have. You know? Exactly. Then, then I have, and of course I love Lin-Manuel. Mm-hmm. Love him. Uh huh. But I don't know if he hasn't been miscast in this. Okay. Because when he talks in the trailer with his Cockney accent, I'm not believing it. Well, that maybe they did that as a tribute to Dick Van Dyke, whose Cockney Who's, accent was pretty terrible. It was. It, you're you, yeah. You're exactly right. <laughs> but at the same time, and we've talked about maybe this. We kind learned of thing. that he was an American imposter the whole time. What we and what we've talked about previous mm. is that sometimes when you see things as a child. Hashtag hocus pocus. You have a different, ver- you know, idea of it as to when you're singing as an adult. I saw, I saw Mary Poppins as a child. Mm-hmm. Yes, I know Dick Van Dyke's accent was crap, but I bought into it because I was very young and, and you everything. Didn't know better. Yeah. And now I don't know whether I'm able mm-hmm. to buy into this or not. We'll and that's see. to me. Who is this movie for? Is this movie for our Ooh, that's generation? That's a good question. I don't know. Who is going trying to like get a little nostalgia by kind of going to see? I think it's for people generally our age who want to take their kids. 
and have them have a magical Maybe. experience just like they did. Um, you know, Ben Wishaw and Emily Mortimer as Are the great grown Jane and Michael actors. look fantastic. They do. Um, their kids look like, you know, not very annoying yeah. Disney kids, which yep. is a high bar because yes. it's very easy to be annoying. Really is. Uh, in those roles. But British kids, British actors have a better chance. But then here's our issue with the cameo or with the with the trailer and the way the This is our go. big issue. There is a cameo. And we were so excited when we saw Angela Lansbury. Yep. And so she has a probably Little a tiny moment role where she t- and she says some advice to yeah, somebody. She's forgotten whatever. what it's like That's to be fine. a child or something like that. I think she's talking to to Michael, who's all grown up. I wondered if she was the the lady who fed the birds. No, all the, grown up. Okay, the lady that fed the birds was a homeless person, and she's probably long dead. Well, but Angela Lansbury looks. They made her look. She's. Even, in, I mean, she looks like she could be one hundred and twenty. Oh, I feel like she's um, like a grandmother. Or okay, something. maybe I don't know. Um, shades of the bird lady. Anyway, she's in this thing. And then at the end of it, they go through all the credits, right? And they're like, Emily Blunt, Lynn manuel da, 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 da. Dick Meryl Van Dyke. Streep, who we didn't even yeah. see in yeah, the we, preview. Hey, excited for Meryl. Right. Love her. Dick Van Dyke, who we didn't even see yes. in the preview, but you know, he's Again. a throwback to the original. So yes. cool. And then nothing, nothing for Angela. What the weirdest fuck? thing? What the hell? Ever. Disney? Angela Lansbury is a fucking yeah, legend. She's in your movie. Strange. What are you doing? So that's our problem. We want we're going to boycott Mary Cut Poppins just because, because they it didn't... was mean to Angela <laughs> Lansbury. <laughs> December 21st, and uh, the next film on our slate is Aquaman. Which is kind of, it, well, the trailer could be a Christmas present. <laughs> he is so pretty. <laughs> yeah. He is so pretty. Yeah, and fun. And, and, and he, it look, I, you know, it's Jason Momoa. And, and the first thing I said to you when we started watching this trailer is like, this can't be a DC Universe movie. There's color. I know. And I said, the sun is shining. There are blue skies yeah. and it's sunshine. And it it's like, and they're underwater and it's like blues and beautiful. greens. And yeah. he's got a, you know, and at one point he wears the traditional orange costume and it's like, wow. Yellow and green, golden green. It's not orange. It's orange. It's not orange. It is orange. It isn't orange. Okay. I'm going to fight you on this one. That's that original fine. costume That's is fine. orange. I'm okay. going to find it right now. Uh, Anyway, uh, um, anyway, yes. So it looks like superhero movie. Yeah. And, but a fun one. And yeah, no, it looks like a fun superhero movie. It looks different. We've never been to this world, the underwater world before in the yep. superhero verse. So I'm, I'm all for it. You know, they showed the good parts. They showed funny parts. I didn't realize and still I, until I saw the trailer that Nicole Kidman apparently plays his mom. Yeah. Which is fun. And she has a moment where she gets to fight. Do, 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 she has an action sequence. She does she some ass kicking. Ass. Yeah, she does. Um, Amber Heard plays the love interest. Is that the redhead? Uh-huh. I have a problem with her hair. It is way too red. Yeah, that's the thing, is that her hair, she's a redhead in the comic books. You can be a redhead without it being like true fire engine red. Well, that's true. But but in the comics, when they depict someone with red hair, it's usually that color. Yeah, but- yeah. And so they could, I agree, they could have just okay. given her red hair. Okay. It would have been nice if she'd been a, you know, a woman with auburn hair, but instead and they gave her this they color. They looked that fine together. They may even have chemistry together because yeah. they worked back and forth in yeah, the trailer. I it agree. was, it was adorable. I mean, you see, again, they raise the stakes, you know, and they give you, you know, he's got to save Atlantis and all of this stuff, you know, or save the world from Atlantis taking over or whatever. I mean, it looks, I'm, I'm there. That's yep. all I have to say. Yeah. I'm there. No, it's fun. And it, it looks like it's going to be a, a great time. And he's kind of got this interesting kind of like, uh, dude, you know, kind of, you know, energy that makes yeah. him an interesting uh, very superhero interesting. in the DC world, yes. especially. Yes. Now, it's funny because Aquaman is always like kind of the butt of a lot of jokes in, you know, the comic book very world much. And among all those geeks. They don't seem to be like using, they're just like, you know what, we're just going to do a badass movie and we're going to call it Aquaman and you're going to deal with it. But it's also going to have a sense of humor and it's going to be a little bit like I think, yeah. And I think that uh, this might put some of those to rest just because he is, yeah. he's doing really okay, well. Okay, I'm not talking about this next one. This is all you. Go. <sighs> well, it won't take too long. Um, <laughs> so also coming out on the 21st is another franchise um, 
world peace. Ugh. So if you're a fan of Transformers, uh, you may or may not, you know, and probably everybody in the first two, especially, I think, every, you know, everybody's favorite Transformer was Bumblebee. Mm. And so he got his own origin story movie. And that is what this is. Oh, God. And uh, so you said you were going to say anything, but all you've done is moan while I've talked about this. I'm and I haven't even I'm gotten to anything yet. I'm just... You know, it, here's the deal. It, it is... Uh, it's an origin story. It's a teenager buys uh, this VW bug as her first car. It turns out it's Bumblebee. He's hiding from somebody. John Cena's in there as a government army guy or mm-hmm. something. And then we hear Prime yip yapping. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of I'm not exactly sure what the plot is. Bumblebee saves the He's world. He's got to save he something. He saves the earth. Hallie uh, Steinfeld is the is the teenage girl. She looks good. She looks fine. Okay, She's I'm going to lie. I'm going to talk back because I like her. Did you see her in True Grit, the Coen Brothers remake? Uh, yeah. No, she she's awesome. good. No, she I think great. she's good. So I don't have a problem with her. And IMDb says that Justin Thoreau and Angela Bassett are also in this movie. They must be voices. They must be voices of something. You know, in one of them, one of the bad guys in the trailer, uh, one of the bad Transformer uh-huh. things. It was a woman's voice. I bet that was Angela Bassett's okay. voice. Okay. Didn't recognize it because I wasn't caring, but <laughs> I bet that's what it was. And that's an easy way to make some money. So Bumblebee is, if you like it, if you like the Transformers and you is even if you especially like Bumblebee, your kids, boys, and I know that's gender specific, but, you know, 12 and under, you'll love it. And, or maybe, I don't know. I have no idea. It looks so typical. Moving on, Steve Carell, who I really like, although I have to say it's uh, weird. Oscar, Oscar, see, wanna, yeah. wanna, Oscar, wanna, well. Oscar. <laughs> He's already done, what was it, Beautiful Boy just came out. Yeah. And that's like, I want an Oscar so bad. Yeah. And now he's doing. And then doing... he was the, the wrestling coach movie. That oh, was jeez, a, I forgot about that. that. Again, Oscar I want movie. an Oscar. Please give me an Oscar. And then what's this? Uh, it's called Welcome to Marwin. Uh, where I, when, you know, the concept is really interesting. I like, I mean, I like the idea of this whole concept. I wonder He's, if it had been somebody else, I wouldn't feel as cynical about it. I'm just ready for Steve, who is really good at comedy, to do comedy. Okay, sorry, fair. That's where I am. Yeah, no, I mean, he's like, he, like we said. Actors who can do comedy can also do drama, right? And he's, he's like on this that. tear to you get know, an group. Oscar. <laughs> Sorry, I just feel that way. Well, I okay. So this movie looks interesting. Um, Parts look very interesting. He, he plays a guy who was beat up uh, by a gang of people. We World don't know War II. He's a World War II vet. So this is taking place in the late forties, early fifties. Really? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Did you not the see? movie? Yes. Okay. I th- his art installation was certainly had shades of the retro, but I didn't get that this was a period piece at all in the, yeah, in the real he's world. He's a world. He, he's a World War II vet. Okay. They say that at the very beginning. Janelle Monet does not look like she belongs to that period at all. Nor does his caseworker. They look like they just stepped out of the 2016s. If you look at um, Leslie. Man, she's dressed in 1950s. They all are wearing 1950s stuff. Okay. Well, then the the preview is sloppy in that regard because I didn't pick that up okay. at all. All right. Um, but nonetheless, uh, he's a guy. He was beat up. Um, he is suffering from amnesia and probably a little bit of post traumatic stress disorder from this attack. And he's kind of insulated his world a little bit. He only speaks to this, you know, little group of women who all kind of collectively take care of him, either because it's their job or some of them, I'm sure, are friends. Um, he creates this art installation using Barbie and Ken dolls. Um, and each one of these dolls kind of represents either himself or somebody in his life. The 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 cynical side of me watched this preview this last time and said, it's weird to see Steve Carell as a Ken doll because if you've ever seen Steve Carell with his shirt off, that man is so hairy. <laughs> so to watch him be like this completely hairless Ken doll, it's like, that's not real. Um, but he kind of, he's, he's, he goes into this world that he's created as a form of healing for him. Um, and then as it turns out, he, you know, at some point musters the courage to go to a hearing so he can, Tell it's the their judge. sentencing. Yeah, they're what what these yep. people did to him, and also it looks like you know his art is discovered by somebody, and so these pictures that he's taking, you know, are being blown up, and and right. people are starting to celebrate him. Um, 
you know, and and that part of it, the idea that, you know, art as therapy and turning that into a drum, a dramatic thing, that seems interesting. You know, the the image of him walking through town, you know, with a red wagon behind him full of Barbie and Ken dolls. I was like, mm, shades of Forrest Gump a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't know whether they wanted to, you know, I didn't know if that was a really an on purpose kind of thing. And it, it, you know, the part, it, it, it looks uneven. I'll I, say that. Yes, I, I agree. Now it's got Diane Kruger. It's got Leslie Mann. It's good. As you said, Janelle Monet. It's not like it's a bad cast no, at all. No. And there are some effects that look like they're kind of fun because basically he's created this, this world with the dolls that, you know, every like he's got a doll and then each of the women in his life, the women of Marwin, he calls mm-hmm. them. You know, I don't know. Is Leslie Mann might be a love interest. I can't really tell. It looks like, you know, I'm just not well, sure. Steve Carell's Ken doll is certainly into her Barbie doll. Right. We do see them. kissing. <laughs> That's true. He's right. But I mean, it's one of those where I, 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 I probably won't see it in the theater just because. Again, I know I feel so cynical. It just to me is just like, really, Steve, really? I guess I wonder if it had been somebody else, if I wouldn't feel differently about it. Maybe. I, don't know. I mean, I, I think I Steve Carell is very appealing. I as do, an too. Actor. But I, um, I just this to me is. And just, I think that if you're going to do a movie like this where he's playing, he has to be kind of a sad sack. You know what at it is? At some point, you want someone who's naturally kind of appealing to be in that role. So it's not even more correct. of a downer. I mean, right. If it was Daniel Day-Lewis during this, there'd be no way in no hell you'd go. Exactly. And here's the thing. Maybe part of the problem is that it has been, this is like number three or four in a row. That is, to me you know, looking for awards. This, this is, and that's the cynic in me, but this is like the third or fourth one in a row that Steve, that has come out with Steve Carell as being dramatic. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can do comedy really well. And so it frustrates me when the really good comic actors act like, no, I need to do drama because that's what's taken seriously. And I'm like, but, 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 but you do comedy so well, please do that because otherwise we're left with Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Anyway, that's that. But I mean, I'm not saying it's not worth seeing. I'm just saying that it's not necessarily on my list. And then not all comedies are all that, you know, welcome either. Hence, the next movie on our list. <sighs> I, Take I, it away, Stacey. I don't I don't really want to. I want someone to, first of all, I will say that this is the second John C. Riley movie. As I said, there were three on this mm-hmm. list. And, and you're glad to see two out. of them. Um yeah, two of them I'll see. So this is called Holmes and Watson. Guess what it is? It's Will Ferrell and John C. Riley as, as Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Sh- Watson. And they're... Uh, it, the, the, you know what it reminded me of? Naked Gun. It reminded me of the Naked Gun stuff. Okay. Um, you know, so, you know, they they meet Queen Victoria at the very beginning of this preview, uh-huh. pre- this trailer. They meet Queen Victoria and uh, Watson, John C. Riley's character, holds her hand a little too long. She finally walks away and he looks at Holmes and he says, she's just so gorgeous. And then, well, at first he flips up. And he says, I love you. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, I forgot about that. Right. And then yeah. you find out that he it wasn't just social awkwardness. Like he actually thinks that Queen no, he Victoria thinks she's is wonderful. hot. And so does. So does Holmes. Oh, my God. And it, then what is. Uh, oh, the next uh, the next almost the next scene is. So you see them standing out in a street, a London street, dark night. Mm. And uh, Holmes has his back toward Watson, then turns around and he has one of these stupid fake handlebar mustaches yep. on. And Watson looks at him and pulls his gun and says, what have you done with, you know, Sherlock Holmes? And Sherlock, you know, of course, rips the mustache and says, I never, ever left or whatever. And, you know, Watson's stunned. He's like, oh, my God, that was brilliant. And you're like, oh, shit. These snacks. two are so this stupid. This is what is going to so happen. They're so dumb. And it's I... Talladega Nights with no cars. <laughs> I would have been less offended by this preview had they not clearly done so much borrowing from the Benedict Cumberbatch version of Sherlock Holmes with all of the like animation that kind of takes over when Sherlock gets into his head and starts figuring things out. And I was just like, Ugh. I mean, you know, I fine, whatever I, here. I will say this. I laughed watching the preview. I did. I laughed watching the trailer, but as soon as it was over, I'm like, don't need to see anything else. Like I'm done, and and I'm sure there's other funny stuff. There may in the be, movie or w- it may all be in, in the this, preview. But I don't need to spend twenty dollars to see more of that. No. When three minutes was all I need, it's like you know, it's like somebody gave me 
uh, a snack size almond joy. And do I really need to eat now five almond joy bars? No, no. I, I just needed the taste of it. Yeah. And that's cool. I'm done. So yeah, yeah it, it pass. So that's kind of how I for me. Yeah, I I I am a hard pass on that one as yeah. well. But it is coming out in case yeah. that is your cup of tea. Okay. So on December 25th, it's going to be a movie about liberal America's most favoritist Jew ever. <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg has a movie. Now I saw RBG. Did you see RBG? I the haven't documentary? recorded it. I haven't seen it yet. I know oh, it's wonderful. So I know. Good. I know. I know. So good. I know. And in that documentary, they tell the story of her taking on this case. Uh, she was looking for a case that would kind of break down the barriers for women. And she found it when a man was discriminated against because uh, he was a primary caretaker and the law was written such that a primary caretaker, of course, had to be a woman. And so he wanted some of the same you know, right. laws to apply right. to him and they weren't. So this is what got her in front of the Supreme Court. And the movie is called On the Basis of Sex. Uh and one of the lines that she says, the law discriminate, the law, you know, differentiates on the basis of sex quite often. Mm -hmm. And she wants to, like, strip that language right. from the law. So Felicity Jones plays uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yep. Looks like she does a really, really good mm -hmm. job. She's British. Um, she was in um, Rogue One. Yep. Her husband is played by Army Hammer, who Gorgeous. is just so pretty. Yes. He's so nice to look at. Pretty. Um, Justin Thoreau. Also plays, it looks like he's head of the ACLU. Okay. Something like that. Uh, what Kath an interesting actor he is. He's, he's really he's interesting. Finished, he is interesting. And yeah. yeah, we've talked about that. He's not He's not just an actor. He's a writer as well, which yes, I didn't realize. He wrote a lot. Um, and, you know, what, what's fascinating to me about him is he is so good looking and yet will be so ugly. Yeah, no, he doesn't these, care. He's an actor you know, as yeah. opposed to a movie star. Exactly. Did you see him in Maniac? Uh, no. The Netflix series. Oh, my no. God. The the bad hair and the really bad eyeglasses. And it's like, I can't even see the hot guy that you are yeah. under all that shit. He doesn't he's care. so good. He's so good. Um, also in it are Kathy Bates and Sam Waterston. Looks like Kathy Bates is, is on the liberal side. Looks like Sam Waterston is part of the old hierarchical, yes. geo, you know, Basically uh, bureaucracy. Saying if she wins this case, it will destroy, it will the, destroy American the American family. the American family. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, it again, it's, it's, it's one of those that... There is a reason that these movies are being made, mm -hmm. and it's because apparently society needs it. It looks good. This looks like a good movie. I yeah. couldn't see anything in the preview that told me that this wasn't going to be a good nope. movie. Nope. I think it's – and this is one of those things that, like, you know, it probably uh, – look, it's being released on December 25th. Yep. Do the people who are releasing these movies have the Oscars in mind? Of course they Of course they do. They do. But – if a movie looks this good, like notice how we don't care if it's Oscar bait anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like, bring it, like do it. Cause it looks great. You know, um, there are movies that do strike us, <laughs> you more than me, I think as just designed to get an Oscar as opposed to designed to entertain or I don't enlighten think, anybody. Yeah. I don't, I, that's, and that's, I do. I totally feel that you're exactly right. Um, that is a good description of me and my feelings about this. And in this one, I don't feel this. I feel like this one is one of of that. It kind of it, it's the timing thing. It's out on purpose. Ruth Bader Ginsburg is on everybody's mind yep. on purpose mm -hmm. because of of things that are going on. Yep. They didn't get. I mean, Felicity Jones has done a lot, yes, but they they didn't get like Emma Stone. You know what I mean? They didn't get yep. a huge, huge A list name that's you know American, whatever. Mm -hmm. They 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 wanted it to be done well. I mean, and again, I love Emma Stone. She's a brilliant actor. But she's a bigger name right now than Felicity Jones. And so to me, this was about the movie, not about the actor. Well, and it, it to me, this goes to show that when the movie is something that people are going to want to see anyway, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg is the big name associated Correct. with this movie. And she's not even in it. It's about her. Yes. Although if they sneak her into the credits, that would be kind of fun. Um, Surely she consulted. <laughs> oh, I'm Surely sure. Surely she consulted. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, it's her story. Um, but... Uh, you know, it just shows me that you don't always have to cast a huge name for something that people no. are going to see anyway. You like, don't need a big star no. for this because Ruth Bader Ginsburg is your star. Just make a good movie about yeah, it. And I think so. I, I, I think that that is that is awesome. So I'm, that might be the one I'm most excited about on all these movies. I, I think so. Yeah. Now, trying to scooch in under that Oscar wire uh, on the 28th. Is a little movie I'd never heard of until I started looking up what's coming out, mm -hmm. and it's called Stan and Ollie, and it is Stan and Ollie, the third John C. Riley movie on the list. Um, so 
if you, there are a lot of people who may not know who these people are. I know you hear Stan and Ollie and my ears may go, ding, is it about them? And it yes. is, but yeah. who's them? But who is them? And that's Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. They were vaudeville kings and then they were um, early movie kings mm-hmm. and that uh, they were a comedy duo <laughs> they were the will ferrell and john c Riley of their day oh my gosh that's true that's <laughs> kind of true now john c Riley plays uh hardy. oliver hardy yep. and steve coogan british yep. actor plays stan laurel which is fine because stan was british so yep. that's it's not that's not a weird thing works um steve coogan you might know from philomena you yes also which this was made by the same yep. people who did philomena also in uh night at the museum yep he was also uh he played the uh, roman soldier Mm -hmm. Uh, he's he's great i've seen you know stuff with him and i really do like him he can do everything as can john c Riley. it looks like a good movie it is one of those smaller ones i don't know that it'll go to the big theaters i think it'll go to the small independent places uh so if you want to see this but i will tell you it looks like it would be a lovely it's a biopic um, John C. Riley has a crap ton of makeup on a lot of because they, they had to make him because, uh, Oliver Hardy was a big guy, yeah. real big guy. And that was part of it. They were a visual comedy team mm-hmm. as well. Uh, S- Stan was the writer and, and that's referred to in the preview. And, you know, it's, it's, I think it, I think it'll be interesting. Again, I think it's one of those it's based on or inspired. Yeah. I think it's based on. What I on, like but... about this is this is one of those things that they didn't try to tell their whole life story. It's a condensed piece of their life where, you know, you're looking at one kind of, it's, it's a, a farewell tour yes. that they're taking. They're going on this live tour and there's a lot of resentment between the two of them. Apparently, Oliver Hardy did a movie without, yeah. you know, without Laurel, and that caused some hurt feelings. And you know, there's but there's... also that time period. You know, their their careers were waning. Mm-hmm. Uh, the world was changing. Yep. Um. It was it, television wasn't there yet, but it was coming. Yep. And movies were definitely changing. Hollywood was different, and and, and vaudeville point, was dead. And at one point, you see them hit the stage, and it's like a half empty theater. Correct. And, and it's disappointing, and it's like mm, you know. But rather than try to cram in an entire life. Right. It's not a biography movie, completely. It's, it's just, just a little slice of this is a moment. Right. It's kind of like when we talked about the queen, you know, that was a movie. It wasn't about Queen Elizabeth no. II's entire life. It was nope. about one week in her life that, that told a lot where a lot of stuff gets exactly. unpacked. And I think this is the same thing by looking at the end of their life. You get to go back to a lot of. And I, and I and think stuff. that I, I don't have a problem with this one as well, because I think the fact that a lot of people don't know who they were and mm. they 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 set the tone for a lot. Of, you, you mentioned Farrell and John C. Yep. Riley. I'm sorry, but any kind of thing like that, it's coming from this. Bob Hope being Crosby, yep. uh, Abbott and Costello. They were all after these guys. Yep. And um, so there's a lot of the pioneering legendy kind of thing can, that can go with Oliver, with, with uh, Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. But I think a lot of kids don't know who they were because obviously they're not even. And I don't know anymore. that a lot of kids are going to go see this movie. The, the the trailer, at least the movie they're selling us, the trailer looked a little bit more dramatic. No, I don't know that they else. are, but at the same time they're putting it, the, the names are going out there. So but you know what? I consider myself pretty knowledgeable about a lot of these things. I don't know much about the inner lives of Laurel and Hardy. So I'm excited from that standpoint. Cause yeah. I know who they were. Right. You say Stan and Ollie and I, who I know who they are, yeah. but I don't know much about them. Yeah. And so it's going to be exciting to kind of, have two really good actors kind of right. you know, give me a, a portrait. Of and I think, and, and, and then, you know, the end of December is actually a good time for it because there's nothing else really competing with it because all of the big ones came out a little bit earlier. Well, I will say, so, so we went by kind of major release dates. Here's what Oscar bait often does though, is that, you know, you know, as well as I, is that they will say, Opening in select markets. So one theater Correct. in New York and one theater in L.A. And it's not going to hit our theaters until the middle of January. Right. So I'm sure there's a lot of Oscar bait that we have not talked about. Which is OK for uh, me because, you know, one. I love the Oscars. Yeah. Um, you know, here's the deal. It, it as as every holiday movie time comes, you know, you have hits and you have misses, you have family fair, you have action stuff mm-hmm. and they've kind of hit everything. On that note, I will say probably the Ruth Bader one is the one I'm most excited to see. Uh I do want to see Aquaman. Um, And there's a few others that that I'm going to go maybe. But, uh, you know, and Mary Poppins, I want to like. 
Yeah, the, I the, like the two it. that the two that really excite me. Of course, I'm a huge Potterhead, so Fantastic Beasts right? is up there with me. I will definitely see it. Uh, the other one that it just made me go yay as soon as I saw the video started playing was Widows. I that yeah. just looks like it's going to be actiony but fun and kick ass. It's going to be very cathartic good uh, to go see that yeah, one so I'm, I'm excited about that and uh, you know viola davis kicking ass so those are the ones that excite me out of all these so anyway these are the, some of the tr- previews we suggest you go ahead and we'll put them up in our uh stuff to watch on our website go ahead and look them up if you're interested in any of them i will put a little disclaimer some of the dates may change sure these are the dates that are out there right now and and that's how you know we've talked about but the them. studio didn't call you and make these you know and confirm not all these this year with you Stacey? usually they do but not <laughs> this year and i'm so a little ticked important. off i'm writing a letter so happy happy holidays man happy, happy november december at the movies everybody yeah this is poperation i'm eric i'm stacy see you next time you've been listening to poperation with eric and stacy the podcast that dissects popular culture one bloody organ at a time. Subscribe today on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other podcast listening site or app. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Poperation Room. Check out our website at poperationroom.com for all of the podcasts, our blog, swag, and games. Until next time, when we're back in the scrubs. So December is a day that will live in infamy. <laughs> no, I'm well, going to start over. Wow. A month is a day that will live in infamy. Good job, <laughs> Stacy. Great work.